up everybody Sven Diesel here we're gonna be tying up the STP frog this is not a new pattern it's something that's been around for quite a while I've heard back into the uh, early days of fly fishing no I'm kidding but at least the last 15-20 uh, years uh, this pattern or a modified pattern has been available we're gonna be using the uh, A-Rex TP610 for this uh, it's got a nice uh, <clears throat> little gap to it good sturdy hook and we'll go ahead and get that in the vise and secure it and we are going to be basically using a wax thread. This is an ADOT. I like to use a little bit heavier of a thread just so that we don't, uh, when we're using foam, I don't want to, you know, cut through the foam with a, a really thin denier. And so start your thread. And we're going to be tying in a weed guard for this. And I just use 30 pound mono. And I'm going to cut off about six inches. I'm not too concerned about being frugal with this, but I'll just tie it in right here on the top of the shank, work my way down well into the bend. And we'll go ahead and stop uh, the wraps um, once we get about, <clears throat> I don't know, an eighth of an inch down into the bend. And then I will just clean this up because you will see this. And I kind of add a hot spot. For some of my other frogs, I do orange or red thread um, just to create a little tag end back there. And I found it to be effective. But for this one, I had some uh, fluorescent green. And so that's what we're using. Now... These are the uh, the foam here. This is a uh, pre-cut foam, and let's go ahead and show how to do that. This is by River Road Creation, a foam cutter here, and basically you create identical pieces of foam that's perfect for making this STP frog. Now we've got this, uh, this is actually frog foam here. Um, I believe River Road Creations is who sells it, and I've got the uh, size, uh, it says six on here, but this is what I like for that size hook that we have in. And I just lined it up so that we get a clean head and we go ahead and push real hard and then that's it. So use your bobkin. I got a pen right here handy and just kind of get that out. Don't use your finger. These cutters are extremely sharp. Um, but that is the top of the frog body. Perfect. Um, now you can see I've been, you know, I'm going to be going on a bass trip here pretty soon. And so I've been making a bunch of these. We'll go ahead and make the bottom, the belly, and the, the white. And um, go ahead and either cut that out or just tear it out. It's you're not going to see that tag in, so it's not too important. But there we go. That's how simple it is to make our frog bodies real quick and uh, uniform. So I do like these uh, foam cutters. They come in a few sizes. I've got the assortment here. So we'll go ahead and take the white first, and this is going to be um, a, a frog that rides hook point down. And so I'm going to basically right there at the bend. Um, tie that in with a couple nice wraps and then I'm going to tightly tie this uh, foam on the underside of the shank normally I don't really like tying my foam super tight but I, I don't want to have a huge um, I'm trying to open up the hook gap as, mo as much as possible and so by securing that foam down um, a little bit tighter it's going to help with that process and so I'll just <clears throat> lay down some nice wraps um, minimizing the foam on the underside of the shank there and then we'll go ahead and advance our thread back into the bend right where we tied in our, our white and we'll tie in our green if you want the spots up make sure you uh, tie it so that those uh, spots are, are currently touching the shank so that way when you fold it up and over it's going to be um, visible and you can see I'm loosely wrapping my foam here and I'm gonna get try to get back to where I was with my um, my white but I don't really want to secure that foam right there on the top too much and cramp it down like we did on the uh, or sorry you know really secure it down like we did because I want it to be loose so um, we're gonna add the legs this is some uh, just some tab legs here I'm going to basically take a tab pull off three legs and set those aside and then I'll reuse the remainder of this tab and I will tie it in for the rear um, legs and just fold it in half around your thread um, bring it up and over the shank keeping those on the underside the reason we're doing this on the white side is it also helps um, a little bit keel the fly in my opinion you're just putting the weight on the bottom side of the shank versus the top side confusing it as to the the point and the offsetting weight of the rubber legs because they do have weight but I like to just do some figure eights around these, not cranking down wraps. I don't want to break them, but securing them uh, really nice. Do a few wraps in front of them, and then I'll figure eight of it again, and making sure to get about, I'd say, four four figure eights on each leg. I, I think that's what I usually do. And then 
Now I'll advance up to where our foam ends and about two eye gaps behind um, the, the hook eye is where I'm going to secure in these uh, the, the, the front arms and I've got the three tabs left and it really helps a little tip here is if you can keep those tab ends secure don't pull them apart or trim them off it really helps later when you're tying the legs um, making the hands and the, and the feet and right now it kind of helps with the confusion of what's going on here in this hot mess but when you're when you're tying these you're not going to be reaching around a, a digital camera here and so you'll have a little bit more of an ease and control and so same process as the rear legs make sure you do about four wraps on each side of the arm um, that way and then always do a few wraps in front of it to just secure it and I'm not cranking down I don't want to break those legs and just secure it um, we're going to be applying a little bit of glue later that will help bond this all together but you can see we got a lot of legs here this can be a mess but just take your time use some patience pull them back use a hair clip if you want and then advance your thread almost to the eye I've got about I covered that half distance here and kind of part your legs because we're gonna start forming the frog body at this point making sure each of your legs is and arms are going to the correct side and then all you do is pull this foam up and over and that is the top of our frog and then we will pull the belly in between those uh, legs and arms and just hold it right there and pinch it and then kind of manipulate the you know the legs out of the way and our thread is right where we want it so I'm just going to pinch that come up and over and just kind of try to keep it in place it's gonna to want to walk on you a little bit and you may get a loose wrap on that first wrap as you start to cinch down because I don't like to start cinching until I get into my third or fourth wrap but I'm using some nice securing wraps at this point and if it's still twisting on you that's completely normal and then I'll, I'll spread it and work my way up and through and do a bunch of wraps here right there in that gap I left um, it's not a lot it's about half a hook eye I want to make sure all my legs are good they look good so let's go ahead and we will get this weed guard secure now I just need to take this hook out of the vise for a second to uh, get that aligned back with the hook and and I, I just do these pretty basic you can do a double weed guard you can do a single I'm just keeping these nice and simple a single and so I'll take my bodkin come on the underside of this uh, white foam right where this is going to be intersecting uh, right past the thread wraps we just did and we have that little bit of gap still between the tie-in point of that that foam head and the the hook eye and I want to leave this just a tad bit loose because right now it's pretty even with the back of the shank and I know when it comes out of the vise it's not going to be and so I leave about an eighth of an inch to I would say a quarter of an inch sometimes and then I'll go ahead and tie that in and secure it with some nice wraps and then I'll fold that tab end down do some more wraps just to really lock that in place because this is could be our lifesaver between being really frustrated on the water and, and having a good time and fishing and catching lots of fish so we'll go ahead and whip finish we're pretty much done with the tying portion of the fly the rest is all going to be smoke and mirrors using uh, some super glue but go ahead and just do a triple or whip finish you can do a, another whip finish if you want but I'll get a little bit of super glue um, that kind of bonds everything together and so I think we're going to be golden now now we want to make sure we get these uh, legs and arms uh, secured and basically I just do one knot right here and the arm length I do about the length of the top foam and then I snip off with about a quarter of an inch there that makes a nice arm and the the leg length I actually do the overall length from probably the the tip of the foam to the rear of the the the, the hook bend and so it's a little bit longer than the arms and that's just to match the hatch <clears throat> trying to make it make a, a little bit more realistic and then I'll just match the other side just doing a simple knot and then trying to make sure you, you don't tighten it all the way you can always push it down or pull it away uh, as long as it's still a little bit loose but as soon as you sense that down then it becomes a nightmare to try and modify but use those tabs to your advantage um, it helps really really uh, a lot at this point to secure that and make those knots so you can see that one's just a little short so I'll just pull it away from the the frog body and then snip off that tab and that is a frog looking fly but let's make it durable now and you can see I got the, a little bit more white on this um, 
than I normally would like right there at the back end but we might be able to fix that with this uh, super glue. This is just a brush on Gorilla Glue. I like using the brush because it doesn't apply a ton. You can distribute it a little bit better versus injecting it in uh, because if you inject too much, you gotta sit there and hold it forever. Whereas just applying a thin layer, um, I do it to the core on this side and then just on each side of the, uh, the, the foam and then I just pinch it together, making sure that I, I have the correct placement of the arm. It's kind of going straight out at this point and that the uh, rear leg isn't getting yeah that got a little too much white on the bottom so probably not the best uh, this frog but I don't think the fish will notice we can probably put a little bit more super glue in there and push it up a little bit later but I'll be honest I fish these and the less pretty they look the more fishy they are but if you're OCD you can make that change and make sure that you're tying that in evenly um, so now we're just brushing it in on the other side and I will do the same process just apply it thin later and then we'll pinch it down using our, our fingers making sure trying not to get it squozing out onto your fingertips because um, if you're spending the money on this nice foam this frog foam here you can see I'm already imprinting some of that black off so it doesn't really make sense but um, the frog the fish that are going after these frogs aren't gonna see the spots hopefully because this should kill perfect every time but um, you know that is pretty much how I usually time and fish them so um, pretty simple pretty basic um, not much to it and you can sometimes put a clip on there to hold it but I usually just hold them you know I'm usually watching a movie or listening to some music or chatting with a friend and so we could probably put a little bit more glue in there and really seal the deal but I think we're good so you can see how that uh, that floral thread is on there. You can see it as a hot spot, so how it would be beneficial in an orange or something because it would just give a little accent on the rear. Um, but uh, pretty froggy. We got our weed guard. Now you're going to say, why are there no eyes? I usually don't put eyes on, but for this video, let's go ahead and do it. So the frog's eyes I like to use are these cheap craft store ones because chances are they're going to come off, but this does add a little bit of a rattle and they're super cheap you can buy them in a huge bag and I don't care if I lose them because it doesn't increase the effectiveness of this fly in my opinion although I still am in debate whether or not this slight rattle of this eye as I'm stripping it in is beneficial or not I haven't quite figured that out and I've asked a few of my real bass friends that you know go after bass quite a bit more than me and they swear by it and curse it at the same time so I just uh, do it sometimes and don't do it sometimes depending on what kind of mood I'm in. So I just put a little bit of glue and I'm just placing these eyes. I could use a smaller size but this is the smallest I have left at this point but it gives you the idea of what we're looking at and those will rattle um, because of the uh, the way the nature they are. So uh, this is a real eye buggy frog um, but it's gonna fish and whether if I lose those eyes no big deal um, I'll still continue to fish it so there you go we added the eyes for those people that are conscious and um, have much confidence in their frog patterns having eyes so you can see super buggy super effective super quick durable you know it's a quick tie so go ahead and tie some up you know you can whip them out pretty quick and uh, go catch some fish with them and, and have a lot of fun uh, using different foam colors as well. Thanks for watching.